A History of Time Months and Years Time. It marches on relentlessly, outside of human control. But humanity has long found a variety of ways to mark our passage through the eons. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. But why do we count our collective journey through the ages in these integers? As we cycle through the different seasons that come each year, winter, spring, summer, and autumn. How were these months named, and why are they such odd lengths? 30 or 31 days plus 28 days for February? What is up with leap years? And who decided that January was the right time for one year to end and another to begin? Let's look back through history to learn the varied origins of these odd measurements of time. Why are there 12 months in a year? Many ancient cultures came up with the system of dividing the year based on the cycles of the moon. The oldest known calendar in the world, a 10,000-year-old arrangement of 12 pits and an arc, was found in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. The ancient Sumerians counted 12 months in a year and started each month with the appearance of a new moon. Holy days occurred on the 1st, 7th, and 15th of each month. The word month comes from the word moon. But there is a big problem with using lunar cycles to divide up the year. The solar and lunar cycles don't line up. One lunar cycle is 29.5 days, and 12 of them is 354 days, while it takes the Earth 365.2422 days to orbit the Sun. The Sumerians added extra days at the end of the year to allow the two cycles to realign. According to legend, the founder of Rome, King Romulus, devised a 10-month calendar, with each month counting 30 or 31 days. This used the cultural tradition of a month based on the moon, but added a few extra days each month to keep in alignment with the sun. The year began in the spring with Martus, named after Mars, the god of crops and war. Martus signaled the beginning of the planting season and the time when young men would go off to battle to expand the empire. Aprilis derived from the Latin aperire, meaning to open, as this is the time when trees and flowers blossom. Maeus was named for Maya, the goddess of fertility, as the world springs to life and many new animals are born at this time of year. Maya was celebrated at festivals during this month. Junius was named for the goddess Juno, wife of Jupiter. She represents love, marriage, and childbirth. Thus, June has long been considered the luckiest month to be married in. At this point, Romulus must have gotten called to dinner by his wolf mother, because the fifth through tenth months of the year are named a bit lazily, after the Roman numerals five through ten. Quintilis, five. Sextilis, six. September 7, October 8, November 9, and December 10. The remaining 60-odd days of the winter were floating free at the end of the year and not assigned to a month. Romulus's successor, Numa Pompilios, revamped the calendar in several ways. As the Romans thought even numbers were unlucky, he made all the months which had been 30 days 29 days. He wanted the year to be exactly 12 lunar cycles, which are 29.5 days each, totaling 354. So after adding up the 10 existing months, he had 57 days left over. He divided these into two new months of 29 and 28 days. Romans celebrated the god Janus around the time of the winter solstice, when days stopped growing shorter and colder and started growing longer and warmer. Janus has two faces, one looking into the past and the other into the future. Numa Pompelius moved the celebration of the new year to the beginning of the new month, Januarius, which he named in honor of Janus. The second month, Februarius, means to purify, as rituals and festivals, often involving animal sacrifice, were held during this month to cleanse the land and community after winter and in preparation for a new spring. And because this month was considered unlucky anyway and was offered up to the gods, it didn't matter that it was an even number of days. 
even though the months named 5 through 10 were now actually the 7th through 12th months of the year, the original names stuck. But this calendar, at only 354 days, was still out of alignment with the sun, so it got misaligned with the seasons by an additional 11 and a quarter days each year. To compensate, every other February would be cut short to 23 days, and an additional leap month, called Intercolaris, was added in. The convoluted system became even more confusing, as Roman politicians would often add extra leap months to extend their own terms, or skip leap months to get opponents out of office faster. And when the empire was at war, which was often, the leap month was frequently forgotten for years. So before long, Romans were shoveling snow in Junius and sunbathing in Januarius. A few centuries later, Julius Caesar came along and applied method to the madness. He borrowed from the Egyptian system of a 365-day calendar and added back the 30th day to the months that had lost it. He ignored the lunar cycles and made the 12 months stretch the entire solar year, eliminating the need for complicated leap months to be added in. And every fourth year, he added an additional day in February to make up for the extra quarter day it takes to make the full orbit. Julius Caesar also renamed Quintilis the month of his own birth after himself. Not to be outdone, his successor, Augustus, named Sextilis after himself, and added an extra day to make August as long as his predecessor's month. And thus we have the Julian calendar, pretty close to what we use today, but there were still a few modifications to be made. In the Middle Ages, the church followed the calendar religiously, so they would know when to celebrate their various holidays, festivals, and feast days. They used the 12-month Julian calendar, but observed the new year on a variety of different dates, depending on local custom. Some areas began a new year on December 25th, Christmas, others on March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, on which the Archangel Gabriel appeared to the Virgin Mary to tell her of Christ's impending birth. Still others followed the Roman tradition of January 1st, but rather than saluting the pagan god Janus, they Christianized the day as the feast of Christ's circumcision. This had a certain poetry, per the significance, of cutting. The most important feast on the Christian calendar, Easter, was supposed to fall on the first full moon after the spring equinox in March but the addition of the leap year in February every four years was pushing this date further and further forward. Because it takes the Earth 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds to travel around the Sun, adding an additional day was rounding this up from 365.2422 to 365.25. This may not seem like much, but over the 1,500 years between Julius Caesar and the Renaissance, our orbit around the Sun and the calendar had become misaligned by 10 days. Pope Gregory XIII commissioned astronomer Aloysius Lilius to calculate what date it should really be and devise a new system to prevent further drift. The new Gregorian calendar was introduced in 1582, and Thursday, October 4th was followed by Friday, October 15th, skipping 10 days ahead. The leap day would also only occur 97 times instead of 100 times every 400 years. It is omitted in years that are divisible by 100, except for years that are divisible by 400. So the year 2000 was a leap year, but the year 2100 will not be. With the implementation of the Gregorian calendar, the Catholic world jumped ahead 10 days. But many other countries in Europe remained out of sync. Protestant England was 10 days behind their Catholic neighbors in France for two centuries. So a person could travel back and forth in time simply by crossing the English Channel. But England finally gave in to papacy and pressure from continental trade and adopted the Gregorian calendar in 1752. Russia stayed on the Julian calendar until their October Revolution in 1917, which, according to the Gregorian calendar, began in November. By this time, they had gotten even more out of sync and had to skip ahead a full 13 days. 
other calendars from around the world. While the Gregorian calendar is used throughout the world today to keep us all on the same page when it comes to science, diplomacy, and business, there are several other calendar systems still used throughout the world for religion and culture. The Chinese calendar follows both the sun and the moon and contains 12 months alternating between 29 and 30 days, which begin at each new moon. A leap month is added to keep the solar and lunar cycles in sync, according to a complex mathematical system. The Chinese New Year is usually celebrated on the second new moon following the winter solstice, so it will fall on January 25th in 2021. The Chinese zodiac dedicates each year to a different animal in a 12-year cycle. Rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, sheep, monkey, rooster, dog, and pig. Certain animals are considered more auspicious than others, and marriages, launching new businesses, and other major life events are often planned around the zodiac calendar. The dragon is considered the luckiest, and those years generally see a spike in the birth rate, as many parents want to give their children a cosmic leg up. Conversely, the sheep is seen as less fortunate, and January 2015 saw a surge in C-sections so that children could avoid being born in this unlucky year. The Hebrew calendar is similarly lunisolar, with 12 lunar months and a 13th leap month added in as needed to keep up with the sun. The new year, called Rosh Hashanah, is one of the most important Jewish holidays. It is celebrated on the first day of the month of Tishri, the beginning of the agricultural year, and generally falls in September. The Hebrew calendar marks the year from the creation of the world according to their tradition, so the Rosh Hashanah of 2020 rang in the Hebrew year 5781. In Hebrew tradition, the day begins and ends at sunset rather than at midnight, so the Sabbath begins on Friday evening and ends on Saturday evening. And because of the importance of the Sabbath, the work week in Israel is Sunday through Thursday. The French Republican Calendar During the French Revolution, a new calendar and timekeeping system was adopted on September 22, 1792 the day after the monarchy was abolished, which was considered day one of the Republic era. The year was divided into 12 30-day months, which were named for natural features of the seasons, such as frimaire or frost in the late autumn, floriel or flower in the spring, and thermidor or heat in the summer. Each month was divided into three 10-day weeks, nine days for work and one for rest. Five or six complementary days were added at the end of each year to total 365. Each day was divided into 10 hours, each hour into 100 minutes, and each minute into 100 seconds. This was an attempt to remove religious and royalist influence over the people. It was hoped that if the populace couldn't remember which day was Sunday, then they wouldn't remember to go to church. The new system confused the people and failed to catch on, so it was forgotten in 1805 after 12 years, and France went back to the Gregorian calendar and conventional timekeeping. Whether this video finds you in Januarius or Julius, and on Moon's Day or Frigg's Day, or following a completely different calendar system entirely, I hope you are having a marvelous time. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment your thoughts, and check out my other royal history videos. If you really want to help, please consider supporting me on Patreon. A link is in the description. Thank you for watching.